Hello everyone, welcome back to Just Rising. Something new for you today. The usual group for Automaton hasn't been able to meet up to record for the next couple of episodes. So it's going to be pushed back about a week. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to bring in temporarily, but I think we're just going to pop up a random game. For anyone familiar with the Gemcraft series, it's a tower defense type game. You build colored gems, you mix their colors, you throw them in towers, they attack things. There's a lot of strangely complexity and nuance to it when you actually do it. Um, the first two games were great. The second game was my favorite one. This one I never played a whole bunch. Um, and I think maybe it's time to do that. So, this game specifically, you can play it for free on Flash. At least to a limited point, you only get so much out of it. You can also purchase it on Flash on some sites. I think Armor Games is one of them. Then, again, I don't know how that site's doing these days. Likewise, though, unlike the other two, you can purchase this on Steam. It's running for about $9.99 right now. There's a very strange way to say $9.99, $10 right now. So, if it looks interesting, give it a try. It's not a particularly expensive game, but it is a lot of fun. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I hope everyone enjoys this. As you can see, I have started. I haven't done a lot, but I've started. So, I'm gonna get rid of these. And start from scratch. Major advantage of the Steam version, this is a whole lot faster. Click the button to select a gem. Click the inventory row to create your gem. Very simple. Click. Drag. So, looks like we're going to start with a whole bunch here for this level. Click here to start the battle. There are also keyboard shortcuts that you'll come across. Anyway, here's the monsters. You can click on them to focus and to look at their information. You'll get achievements, you'll get points for achievements. So. Space to pause. Space to resume. Options. Throwing a gem bomb. You can hit B as well. Um, <clears throat> once you get used to those keys, it's useful. Building a wall, W. Building a tower, T. Walls can be used to prevent anything from passing them and to filter things in. It's not going to be too useful here. There isn't too much dynamics going on here. Combined gems is going to be the most useful here. So, I'm going to click to combine the gems. I'm going to take this, drop it here. It is now a second tier gem with increased damage, increased range, increased everything. Likewise, I'm going to do the same to some of these. These mana leeching gems. This is your mana. You gain a bit at a time, as you can see, 39 per minute. You also get some when you kill something. Sometimes. Take this, for example. You leech a bit of mana as you kill things. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go ahead and resume and leave these things as is. First, I'm going to create a tier 2 gem. When you click on this, these light up. And you can select which one you're going to create a gem for. You can only hold three at a time in there. You can move them around all you want. Let's go ahead and see how this goes. Let's speed it up a bit. 
You also get a little bit of a bonus when you speed things up. You can call ahead of time, too. I think we're about to finish this. Let's have a little fun. You can stay paused. Your towers can't shoot. Nothing can progress. But... For that... Very, very simple intro level. Not much more to it. So, you're going to gain Shadow Cores, which basically get used as upgrades. You're going to get achievements, which give you skill points. We'll pop in to take a look at them in a minute. You're also going to open up new levels. This is how the game progresses. This is the story. I was in the possession of the Forgotten for months, carrying her within. We wandered through the wilderness toward the Spirit Forge, the last stand of wizardry, the place she seemed so to want to get so desperately. I'm not a professional reader or voice actor. Forgive me. I still can't believe my trap worked, but it did. It split us apart and knocked me unconscious. Whether she didn't find me afterward or didn't want to waste time on killing me, I don't know. But she's gone now. I'm probably the first wizard ever to survive her possession. This happened at least three days ago. Fortunately, the trap, or as I call it, Scythe Gate, dropped me near my old wizard tower just as I had planned. After decades spent hiding and watching, I'm home again. She is days ahead of me, though. There's no time to waste. I must hurry and assist the gem bearer. We have to set up a trap with the gem before she gets to the Spirit Forge. <clears throat> now, if you're interested in the story, I'd recommend looking back into the previous games. There is a bit of a story to it. Um... We're just going to continue from here. I don't think you're necessarily going to have to worry too much about spoilers. Those those games are pretty well past that spoiler point. The first game has to be over 10 years old at this point. I think it came back in the heyday of Flash games. <clears throat> Alright. Let us move on to the second field. First, however, we're going to take a look at skills. Every level up is seven skill points. You'll also gain skill points as you saw from those achievements. Unspent skill points provide extra mana. So that's useful in itself. The skill points work on diminishing returns. The more you spend of them, the less you, the more you will have to spend to get anything. So, for now, relatively minor. I'm going to stick with extra starting, except perhaps per kill we'll pop one in. Nope, we spent one, the next one's going to cost two. Check out the talisman. This is where the shadow cores come in. You spend the shadow cores to essentially upgrade yourself. And I don't believe I have any shadow cores to do anything with. Eventually these are going to come in handy. Each level you're going to have an available type of gem, typically built around a variety of theme. The level starts, auto paused. This we have seven waves coming. So right now we have two towers. If you hover over a gem and hit the U button, it automatically upgrades it. This is a red gem. 
it has chain hits. If there are other enemies near the ones that you hit, they will also take some damage. This is a slowing trap. We're going to throw one of these in just in case with an extra tower. Because if anything gets past here, I'm in trouble. I typically run this at pretty high speed. There we go. Let's go ahead and upgrade you. And throw one of you down. Let's call a few extra. This is going to kind of speed things up significantly, but every time you do that, you gain extra points. Now you notice this jumped back, I lost mana. <clears throat> Once you reach a certain level of mana, it upgrades the mana pool. It speeds up how quickly you gain mana, and you'll gain more over time. What we're going to do here I am going to go ahead and merge a gem. Combine gems and take two of a color. Not only do the stats increase, but you're going to gain both stats, slowness and chain hit in this case. You have a you have a decrease in both. It's in no way as powerful on any given thing, but you do get significant advantages with it. I'm going to go ahead and throw down just a triple right here and let this thing fly again. Realistically, there's not any significant threat point. Let's go ahead and shore up our resources right here. Let these guys up as fast as they want. Okay. More shadow cores. A couple more skill points. In the next level, F3. Now, there's a couple of extra modes. One, as you'll see here, endurance mode. You're going to continue on forever. It doesn't end. Eventually, it will get to the point where you just can't go any further. Except maybe toward the end when you get really good at it. In Gemcraft 2, I have managed to keep it going for so long that the game basically crashed. <sighs> Alright, we're not going to play with that today. Very cool. Let's see if there's anything worth doing for skills. I think we should up this a little bit. And note that keeps getting higher. But otherwise, we're going to leave this alone. Now, here's something different. Oh, can I not do this here? Let's return to the map. I'm looking for something specific. Can I hear? No, perhaps I haven't unlocked this yet. Or perhaps I'm remembering this from one of the old games and it doesn't exist here. At the least in the old games, there were multiple modes. I think that's what these other indicators here are for. But I feel I may not have reached that point yet. Have I unlocked any talismans yet? No. Alright. In that case, let's try the next level. 
we have critical hit and poison gems as indicated here. As you can see, if you look at the top and bottom of the image, there are two entry points. There's going to be a spot for them to go through and they're gonna work the way around. I'm going to want to focus on that middle point. So, they're introducing something new here. Traps. So, increased special effect, reduced damage. Extremely useful, particularly for a poison gem or a mana stealing gem. We don't have a mana stealing gem here, but a poison gem is going to be fun. So, we're going to go ahead Toss these around, create a couple poison gems here, go ahead and upgrade you, give us a nice little start. Let's go, let's start at three times speed, and perhaps kick one of these off early, because it's always fun to challenge ourselves a bit. A lot of these guys aren't going to make it through. sure that was worth doing. Increased damage, but there's a bit of a loss to it. Yeah, so these are both tier two. Note that this has a 6% chance of increased damage. 10 poison over 9 seconds. This is going to give me 26 poison over 9 seconds. That is a lot. The actual damage done. Note, this is a grade 2. 3 to 8 damage at 0.8 shots per second. Far more damage. A little slower, but still far more damage. Go ahead and merge a few of these together. Let's get upgrading. Alright, so let's get to a grade 4 here. And... Okay. We are about as far along as we're going to get. Let's just watch the chaos go. Okay. Let's go ahead. Upgrade cost 360. Let's go ahead. Pop that on there. We have a nice increase in damage. 47 versus 26 for that upgrade. Let's just watch everyone file through. Any stragglers get picked up here, but this is going to take most of it down. All right. Four more shadow cores. We got a talisman. So, it's going to give us another skill point because that's an achievement. An inner fragment. Plus 1% experience gained. Those can also be upgraded. And tokens for field F4 and F5. Let's get back to the map, see what we unlocked. So, everything, the fields are named by letter number, and I don't know if there's further meaning to that right now. But what we're going to do is take a look at those talismans. We have one. Now, there's no cost to use this. There's just a limit to how many you can put in. Likewise, you can destroy and salvage it. 
if I were to destroy it, I would gain three more fragments. So, three more cores. I don't want to do that. I want to use this. There's no reason not to use this right now. I'm going to throw that in there. But I do have some cores. So I can upgrade this, either by clicking here or hitting U. We're going to go with U. We're up to two experience gained. Let's go upgrade it to its maximum. So everything I do, I'm going to gain 3% more experience. It's not a whole bunch, but I'll level up faster. I'll gain more faster. I'll be more, become more powerful faster. And while it seems like that's not super useful, I mean, these levels have been easy, the levels get harder and you also can increase the difficulty of the other levels later on. All right, how do we start? <sighs> Mana, critical hit, and armor tearing. This sounds pretty fun. It's going to be a very interesting dynamic level. This is going to be more simple. Let's, let's go here. I can introduce to a new mechanic. So. Wizard Tower. So I have to destroy the locks. So I'm going to have to put towers around to break these. And then we'll be fine. So here's the deal. This is a wall. Any monsters that come through have to go around. They can't pass through here. Right now, that's ideal. However, once they get here, they can go around here or around here. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So let's create a couple of gems. Armor tearing gem, and a mana leeching gem. And then I'm going to build a wall right here. I'm going to force them to come around here and play along with this gem. All right, let's get started. So this is going to keep attacking. It's going to focus on the lock unless something gets through. If something gets through, then it's going to focus on that. Let's throw a little excess damage here. 15% chance of a 67% increase in damage. Let's do it. You can all do this. All right. We've destroyed one. Let's take care of the other. We need to get these destroyed or I lose. Let's upgrade a little. Okay. I haven't focused on this yet. It's not super important right away. But there are different kinds of monsters. Most are going to be the Reavers. They're going to be these big guys that just come through. Eventually, we're going to hit these Swarmlings. It's going to be a whole lot of little monsters coming through at once. They die pretty easily, but there are a lot of them, as you see, 69 of them, as opposed to the 11 or 16 I've been getting. I'm going to want to set something up a little further down the road to deal with them. Another key I'm remembering, D, will duplicate what you click on. Let's throw a little bit of helpfulness here. Go ahead and upgrade you as well. I'm not too worried about these guys getting through. I'm a little worried about the swarm. 
Almost everything's been dying one hit thus far. That swarm is going to challenge me. Let's go ahead and throw this here. And keep going. Ready for that swarm. There will be others as well. Swarms and Reavers aren't the only ones. Everything also has an armor level, as you can see. These armor-tearing gems can wreck their armor. It's pretty important. But... At the same time... Alright. So... I don't remember how to destroy these walls. I'm not sure I can. That might be something that I unlock later. So that means I'm going to go ahead and throw up a couple of things here to start kind of wrecking everything. Here they come. They, they can take a pun they can take some punishment. There's just so many of them. Alright, we got through safely there. Okay. You don't die instantly when your orb gets hit, you lose mana for each hit. But eventually you will lose. Alright comes the last of it. This is the dangerous one. Okay, I think we're safe. We're safe. Once they start throwing in swarms and giants and everything like that, it starts to get a little more tense. Six shadow cores. A couple new achievements. Battle trade scroll. Ah, haste. Okay, curious. New hexiles. So that's the meaning of the F. We've opened up a new part of the map. E and I, along with I1 and E1. A long abandoned tower of a fellow wizard. After the summoning of the forgotten and the demonic outbreak that followed, most of the wizards fell back to the Spirit Forge. In a hurry, they only had time to add locks to guard their towers from monsters and demons. So. Got a couple of new ones. This is another reasonably simple one. Also, not too bad. We'll take a look at them later. For now. Alright, so nothing new to do in here. Skills. I don't really have anything that I'm too worried about upgrading here right now. So, we have our achievements. This is just showing what's available and what we have done. There's a lot. There is a lot. So, at some point I might start focusing on here. For now, it's this. Now, that other thing that was added, I think that's what I was looking for earlier. Here it is, battle traits. This will continue to get better. Click to activate. Notice the experience multiplier is up to 1.3. 
and this continues to go up. The waves get faster, more waves get added. This is reasonably easy here. Let's go ahead and do something... do something fast. We'll let this episode run over a little bit so that I can show you one last thing. Here's our beginning. This is the tutorial. Let's do it again. I don't see why we can't start with a few things. Might as well start balling out of control, right? Let's go. Let's see how we do. Everything's going to be harder. Now let's go super fast for it. Alright. So far, no real difficulty to it. Except for I may or may not have gone a little too far. No, that's not what I want. Let's throw a few gem bombs at him. Okay. Bam. Bam. And bam. Now, a few of these guys are going to make it through. It's inevitable at this point. That's okay. I, I overdid it. Watch what happens when they make it through. Watch my... They didn't make it through. They're going to make it through. Watch my mana go down. It goes down super fast. Yeah. That's what happens. They hit there, they'll come right back around, but they'll tear your mana up. So, that major upgrade, a bunch of extra experience. As opposed to 85, we got 812. We only gain experience for the difference between our previous and the current. So, if I play this again and I get 850, I'm only going to gain another 38 experience. More Shadow Cores. New achievement, a new achievement, and a new fragment. But you know what? I'm gonna end this here. This has been fun, but I'm all out of time for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If this is enjoyed, maybe I'll be coming back to this one. Bye.